Welcome to the finale of the 2012 PCC Cup Series here at the Burke Lakefront Airport in Cleveland, Ohio. As we've got the starting lineup ticking there at the bottom for you. Uh, taking a look at the track here, we've got a diagram of it up top. Uh, turn 1, the Vortex. Drivers like to go 5 and 6 wide into that, and uh, it is Calamity Corner. The straightaway between 4 and 5 also tends to cause some troubles as drivers come off of that sharp left-hand turn. Uh, seven, the straightaway between 6 and 7 causes some issues, as well as uh, the little kink there, 9 and 10, that causes quite a few issues amongst the drivers. Now, uh, Claire Ausier needs to finish 18th or better to lock up the title here today. She should be able to do so um, if there is uh, a high enough attrition rate, as most of the years we run here, there are usually 20 or less drivers running at the finish, so unless she encounters some problems early on, I do believe that she might be able to lock this championship up early. However, uh, a bunch of the drivers that are lower in the championship on this list do need a good finish regardless, they need to survive as well. So uh, we've got a couple drivers in the back, Gaspar D'Souza, Brian Gallagher, Ike Durbin, and Barry Juveno, driver changes and the promoter's option, respectively. Let's take you to the track. The green flag flies, and Christopher Loxanen in the 73 brings your field down to the start of the Cleveland Grand Prix here today as the field fans out five and six wide. I think we might have a little bit of problems there. In the back, yes, we do. Smoke in the air as uh, Christopher Loxanen brings the field down into turn number one, and the field starts to funnel their way through, and uh, Christopher Loxanen definitely opens up his lead as he comes here into turn number two. Head down the straight into turn number three. Christopher Loxanen is your leader. Claire Ausie up to second, but I think she's getting challenged by Nicholas Cordova. It was Barton Sandy who got hooked by Ryan Jeffries back there. Uh, Dion Clements pushes him. Oh, he almost goes over there. Uh, looks like Candace Bowman might have just gotten a little piece of that. All drivers will continue on. Going on board Dion Clements here in the 0-3 car. As, uh, well, he just really had nowhere to go. And uh, he didn't get too much damage. He'll continue on. Without a problem, I don't even think anybody uh, needs to dive into the pits after this because uh, not too much damage there. So Christopher Loxon leads the first lap, bringing his car there through turn number 10, uh, driving for Altoris GP. You can see the snow there on the sides of the track. Uh, way loose uh, goes uh, Claire Ausia there in the background, and she loses quite a few positions. Uh, the snow has no grip, so drivers who slide out there really just have uh, no chance. Uh, here is Lenora Scurry as she gets into, uh, I believe that was Louis Ballard, and she goes around. Nobody hits her, uh, surprisingly, and she'll continue on without uh, too much damage. As uh, here is Tim Borland in the 45, and we've got a little jam up there. He gets run into the back of by Dan Lechleiter. And let's see on Barton Sandy, on board Barton Sandy, looking there at a couple of the few couple of the people in the back up there and he gets into Ben Worthington they go into the wall so even more damage on the number 66 car of Barton Sandy as they begin lap number two uh, here on lap number two Dan Lechleiter runs into a bit of issue he swerves to avoid Nico Bolas Carl Wednesday is also collected in that 019 car here comes Ben Worthington and boom he slams into the back of Carl Wednesday as that car goes flying off track uh, he really uh, jacked up Carl Wednesday in the 019 car and that would be the end of the day for Ben Worthington and Carl Wednesday. As you see there, uh, Worthington actually sped up into them, so uh, that's the end of his day. Now here is Claire Ausier, who's back to 8th by lap number 3. Uh, she still would win the championship, but I'm surprised that she's not up further. Uh, she did slide into the snow and grass there at the end of lap 1, as you did see before, so... Not sure if the handling is the best on that car. Here's Denny Adams on lap number three. Uh, gets tagged by Nico Bolas. He shoots across the track, tries to get a grip, and he slams into the tires. And that is going to be the end of the day for Denny Adams driving the second DJ Motorsports car. The 97 team car to, uh, I believe, Damon Jones. See on board Nico Bolas here. He just hooks him, and uh, oh, that was a rough lick. So he slams into the tires, and he is done for the day. Nico Bolas transferring from winning the SCRA Sunshine State 500 as now Jan Schmidt bails for the pit lane. Uh, I believe this is lap number three at the end of lap number three. Jan Schmidt was running up in the top five, so uh, he, 
must be something uh, unscheduled, something wrong with that car. Here is Claire Aussier as, uh, ooh, handling is not quite good on that car. I think she might have hit that little ice patch that I saw earlier. And uh, she's going to go off the track and lose even more positions now as she falls back. I think you, quite a few cars just went by. She might be back to like 12th now or something. So here is Nicholas Corradovo. He's Nicholas Corradovo. He's running in second place at the start of lap number five. Nicholas Corradovo has brought his A game here so far. Got his car in in pole qualifying. Has a fresh engine in that car because, uh, well, the engine rule here is if you uh, can't really change engines too often, I believe you're only allowed to change three engines at this track, and they they're still on their first engine which doesn't have too much use in it. Going back here is uh, Ian Elias. He is in eighth place here on lap number five, and he is doing quite a good job. He's really just been, well, riding around. He managed to get in in the uh, tier one qualifier and really hasn't been too far close to the front, but he's hanging around in the top ten. He's been consistently in the top ten. Here is... Clara Kindall running third on lap six, and Kindall has brought her A-game here today. She is nowhere near the top two, but she is holding steady in the top three, getting ready to potentially uh, steal the championship if the leaders up front have some problems. Here is Ike Durbin and uh, Brian Gallagher back here in 25th and 26th. Both of these drivers started way in the back. I believe they started... 38th and 39th, so uh, they have really worked their way through the field in the first couple laps up to top 25. As you see there, Brian Gallagher tried to make a move. And uh, two spots in front of these uh, drivers is Gaspar D'Souza. Brian Gallagher bought his way into this race uh, with uh, some Cedar Point money, and he bought the Roos Autosport entry. Up here you saw Gaspar D'Souza running in 23rd place. He brought on board Partex to the Roos Autosport entry. Uh, Leonid Chernov and Sergei Yakovsky brought or got both of those cars in as I think that there's a car off to the side there struggling. It might be the uh, 22 of Roy Cook. Roy Cook driving the 22 Opel Astra for the Maddox Racing Team. He's going to be running full time next year in that car. Uh, tough break for him. He managed to get in to his first ever Cleveland Grand Prix so that's good but uh, looks like uh, some problems with that car are going to put him out of the race early here just uh, six laps in. Here is um, here's Christopher Loxon already starting to lap some cars as uh, a couple cars dove into the pits early on rolling the dice uh, with uh, the pit strategy and oh he slides off course I think he might have hit an ice patch and uh, he's gonna lose the lead not only is he going to lose the lead but I think he might also lose uh, yes he just lost second there as Clara Kindall flew on by in that number 14 car. Yeah, Clara Kindall there right in front of him. So he lost quite a bit of time. Here is Barry Juveno, and he's running in 28th place on lap 8. Uh, he's working his way through the field slowly but surely. This car is uh, own, is owned by the Bolgholm Racing Team, uh, but Stefan's Racing bought it out, so they could actually have a presence in the field. They've got a Stefan's Racing engine in that car. And uh, Barry Juvenal is doing what he can with that car. He's back down to 29th now. Here is Nicholas Cordovos in the lead, uh, getting ready to lap Jared Payne in the number one car. He's reporting that that car might be dropping oil as, oh, he gets a bit loose there. And uh, that coupled with a little bit of an ice patch in that turn sends him way off track. And uh, I think he might lose the lead here. Uh, there goes Dan Leclerc, who's missing his hood. Clara Kendall now takes the lead early on in the going. So now, lap number eight, we've already had three lead changes, and Clara Kindle on board here, and uh, she just goes right on by. There's Dan Lecklayer right in front of her, who's missing his hood. Uh, Dan Lecklayer was involved in uh, that earlier incident with Tim Borland and the Binford Racing Team. Uh, so now, Clara Kindle leads this race, and, uh, well, she's getting some bonus points, and that'll definitely help her chances in getting the championship if she, uh, if her teammate Claire Ausia was to have some problems, which uh, as, as the handling appears to be going away on that 11 car, she might actually have a chance. As now Clara Kindall, she manages to uh, negotiate that turn there, gets on the rumble strips a bit, and continues on. As uh, you see back there, 
Nicholas Corradovas has fallen all the way back to third. Loxanen is up to second once again, and Loxanen is coming for the lead. Now uh, Kendall is stuck behind Jared Payne. She's reporting is dropping some oil. Oh, they get together. Christopher Loxanen and Kindall get together, and Cordovos goes through and takes the lead here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a bit early to be racing like that. This is lap number 12, and you just see that Cordovos splits the two of them and goes right on by as uh, I believe Jared Jared Payne is dropping some oil, definitely, as, uh, well, you, you normally don't see cars jump sideways like that behind uh, cars like that. So uh, Jared Payne... Really just let Corridovas on by. I think he might be pitting sometime soon. He's di he's trying to diagnose the problem in that car. As now Corridovas once again takes the lead. Candace Bowman right in front of him. Uh, stellar run by her by even getting into this race. Here is uh, Barry Juvenal getting ready to go a lap down here on uh, this lap number 13. And uh, he's pulling a bit wide. And uh, whoa, what is he doing? I was reporting that the car just blew up. So, uh, very juvenile, I guess, the Stefan's racing engine in that car was a volatile mix, and he is out of the race. First of the championship contenders to fall is Barry Juvenal here today. Tough break for him. But now Christopher Loxanen blows up on lap number 15. Your pole sitter is done already. Well, uh, the engines that they use in these cars are a mix between their WSCC engines and uh, they, they kind of mashed together some parts and well I guess you can see the end result here as this car goes out of the race early a tough break for him he looked to be a con an early contender as now Jacob Eichholz is up to second place by lap 16 Jacob Eichholz teammate to Nicholas Corradovas this is his last ride in the Katziv as uh, rumors have him going to team up with uh, I believe Ramsey Cockner uh, Ramsey Cockner is uh, owner, I believe he might be the owner of Forward Fast Racing, and uh, they're going to be expanding a bit to a second car, and uh, Jacob Eichholz is rumored to that second car. So in his last run for Katziv here today, he is doing an excellent job. He's already up to second place by lap 16. Here's Larissa Cruz in the number two car, running right behind Lewis Jones. Cl uh, Cruz the PCC lights regular and she also competed in the WSCC. She runs into the back of Jones there and I do believe that might be the end of her day as that car's front end is way pushed up. Uh, she is driving for the Williams Racing Team and was the only representative of the, of the Williams Racing Team to qualify for this race. Driving a green car very similar to her WSCC car as you see there. Lewis Jones developed a problem, stopped in the middle of the track and Cruz really had nowhere to go. So she is out of the race now. Here is Claire Aussier, who is running back in 10th place now. See there, Calvin Hobbs right in front of her. And uh, Ryan Jeffries just went a lap down after an unscheduled pit stop. Claire Aussier, uh, the handling she is reporting, has somewhat returned to that car, as she hasn't really thrown it off too much uh, since the first couple laps. But uh, she's got some work to do if she's going to... Uh, maximize her points here today and prevent some drivers from possibly making some gains. Uh, BB Benz there in the 28 car is also a lap down after an unscheduled pit stop as uh, well she's really cutting off people. Here is Tom Delgado who is running up in seventh place on lap 19 and uh, well he's doing a good job here today so far. Tom Delgado up in the top 10 and uh, he's going to be running for Rookie of the Year next season, so that's going to be really interesting to see. The international racing superstar is devoting himself to the PCC Cup Series. That'll be good. Get a few more fans in here today uh, to see the international racing superstar do battle against the best that the PCC Cup Series has to offer. That's the Pro Cup Champ, the Pro Car Club, uh, as the, the series will be named next season. Uh, the Pro Car Club. So that'll be interesting as, uh, well, title-sponsored PCC is dropping its name. As here is uh, here's Nicholas Corradovos as he sees, uh, well, some calamity going on in front of him as he tries to put Ike Durbin a lap down. Here is Scott Thomas in the number 62 car. He has worked his way up to fourth by lap 20. And uh, he's got his teammate couple, uh, in one spot behind him, Les Jackson, there in the number 63 car. 
driving for the Bad Boy Rally team, a WSCC team that's decided to enter uh, two Peugeots into this race. Peugeot they drive for in the WSCC, so they just kind of uh, took their Peugeot engines and uh, got the go got the go ahead from uh, Peugeot to run some of their 406 sports in this series. And, uh, well, they both made it in through pole qualifying, so I can imagine that they're doing something right. And, uh, well, they're both running fourth and fifth right now, so very good showing for both of these drivers. Very consistent drivers. Both of them have stock car experience. Les Jackson has experience in Australia. Scott Thomas attempted this race earlier on for the American Drifting Association last year. Looking here at Ian Elias, as, oh, Elias gets tagged by B.B. Benz, and, uh, well, she just pushes him way off the track. And uh, Elias's car getting bogged down in the snow as he tries to get back going, and he's going to get back on track, and he will continue on as... Uh, Looks like there was a little bit of damage on the rear end of... Yeah, there's definitely some damage on that 11 car. We'll see what happened there in just a little bit. As here's Brian Gallagher. And, oh, Brian Gallagher, he's breaking down. Something's not right with that 61 car. Uh, then again, the reliability of these Russo Autosport cars is not the best. But Brian Gallagher definitely needs... Uh, let's see what happened here to Clara... Uh, Claire Ausier. Oh, she hooked Tom Delgado, spun him out, and uh, well, Lenore Scurry just kind of went in kamikaze there and spun out <laughs> spun out uh, Claire Ausier. So Tom Delgado also clipped the rear end of that car, but I think uh, Tom Delgado got off fairly scot-free as we go on board with Lenore Scurry, and well, she just kind of lost it. I think she might have hit that ice patch there in the turn, and that just sucked her around. So here is Nicholas Corradovos as he continues to lead at the 1-5th mark with 25 laps in now. And he's getting ready to put uh, Lewis Jones another lap down. Barton Sandy up there I think is on the tail end of the lead lap right now. So Nicholas Corradovo is the early favorite as, uh, well, we saw what happened to Clara Kendall and Christopher Loxanen. So, uh... Any challengers who might step up are definitely going to have to play their A game here today. As now, Cameron Taylor pits here on lap number 25, kicking off green flag pit stops. Uh, well, this is this is a little early to be considered a scheduled pit stop, but nonetheless, he still pits early on. Here is Jacob Eichholz running in second place on lap number 25. He's doing a good job so far today, and uh, he's running. Oh, he just passed uh, Kindall for second there. So Eichholz was running third, now he's running second. As you can see up ahead, uh, there's quite a few lapped cars. He's, uh, Cordovas has opened up the gap as, uh, well, they try to sort their way through lap traffic. There's Josh Marshall in the 18.9. Good to see him back. He was injured at New York Auto Ring earlier in the season. And here is Claire Ausier, and she's up to sixth place by lap 25. And uh, despite that damage that she got earlier on after spinning out, she's really rebounded. She's actually reporting that the handling is much better on the car now that her rear end is pushed in. So uh, maybe it's a good thing that that got pushed in. Uh, because now she's actually quite a bit faster than she was before. As now lap 26, she bails for the pits. Maybe she's going to get that rear end fixed up a little bit because there's a bit of dangling sheet metal on that car. And uh, if that gets ripped off, that it might result in a black flag. So she's playing it safe, going to bring that car into the pits. As, oh, we've got a bit of contact there with uh, Lenny Jacobs the next lap. And uh, Lenny Jacobs spinning around, trying to defend position. And uh, Lenore Scurry's in it. And, uh, well, this was a little bit of a schmozzle back here. As Lenny Jacobs was trying to defend his position from uh, Claire Ausier. As now Nicholas Corradovos hits the pits on lap number 28. And, uh, well, that's good to see the leader in as, uh, well, uh, an average fuel run here is about 30 laps. So he's playing it a bit safe. Ryan Jeffries gets in the back of Candace Bowman. And Arliss Bennington gets into the back of him. And, well, he's going to go way off and uh, play in the snow. So he's going to get stuck there. And that's going to be the end of the, end of the day for Ryan Jeffries in the number 26 car. He will be running for that team next season with pretty much the same scheme. Caterpillar, Caterpillar is sticking on board that car. So now here is Jacob Eichholz. Uh, as he is in the lead, he's going to dive onto pit road. 
You got the uh, the fender on that front end is a little wrinkled. I'm not sure where that happened, but Eicholtz is leading right now, and now Calvin Hobbs is up to second place. He brings that car into the pits. Uh, he's having a very strong run here today, a very quiet run, as now Nicholas Corodovos takes the lead once again. Arliss Bennington up there is the last car on the lead lap. I believe he's running in 18th or 19th place right now. Uh, Arliss Bennington, a part-time racer, having a good job in that uh, kind of tacky-looking 005 car, to, if I'm going to be honest. That car is pretty tacky-looking with the whole gold and silver thing it's got going on. As now, Gaspar D'Souza is up to 14th place. Uh, talk about a good run after starting 37th. He's worked his way up through the field. He's battling with Steve Tamland right now for the 13th position. Steve Tamland is also having a really good run. Uh, he made it in, in the Tier 3 qualifier, I believe. And, uh, well, Gaspar D'Souza missed the show, bought his way in with Partex money, uh, trying to make a run for the championship. Even though he can't win the championship anymore, he's still going to try and get the best run that he can. As, oh, er, oh, CA gets hooked, she hits the wall, and she's speared onto the end of that wall. Uh, I don't want to say it, but that might be championship over for Claire Ossier. She got taken out by her teammate, Louis Ballard. Let's go back and take a look at what happened there as she's trying to limp her way away. Here is uh, Louis Ballard as he runs into the back of her. Uh, looks like she swung a bit wide and he came in. And uh, well, he's going to drive on without too much of a problem. And uh, now, well, looking at this championship, it looks like Nicholas Corodovos will be in the lead of the championship after that. And uh, unless, uh, I, don't, I don't know if uh, Claire Alcia retired after that or not, because that was a huge lick, especially to the driver's side, when she pancaked that car onto uh, the end of that wall. And now here is Ian Elias, who's only a couple points behind uh, even, even Corodovos now. So... Elliot, this championship is once again wide open. I think uh, that pretty much anybody can win this in the top four. Ausier, if she's still running, Elias, Cordovos, and Kindall all stand a very good chance of winning this championship depending on where they finish here today. I do believe that, uh, well, here's Kindall. Uh, she's currently running in second place, but if she gets into the lead, uh, regardless of where Corodovos finishes, she wins the championship now. As, uh, yes, Corodovos is in front, but if Kindall wins the championship, she's only one point behind, and no matter if, uh, the only way that I think Corodovos could win the championship, if she wins the champion, if she wins the race, is if he leads the most laps. So here is Corodovos trying to work his way through some lap traffic, uh, quite a bit of lap traffic around him. There's... The Rus Auto Sport cars, Arliss Bennington, Tom Delgado's there, BB Benz, but Nicholas Cordova's fighting his way through lap traffic. They're really slowing him down, so uh, he might want to try and clear these guys as fast as possible. He does so by diving into the pits once again, and uh, this is an unscheduled pit stop, I think, unless he's trying to play some pit strategy, which, uh, oh. Well, uh, looks like Louis Ballard's playing some blocking games for uh, Clara Kendall there in the number 41 car. And, uh, well, he just blocked Jacob Eicholtz for her. And now, uh, well, now Clara Kendall is up into the lead and would win the championship if the race were to end right now. Uh, she kind of lets her teammate go by right there. As here is Nicholas Cordovos, who's back to third place now. And Cordovos is really really strong here today. He is the class of the field as now he got blocked there a bit by John Conquest from the SCRA. Uh, well, that's honestly surprising. I did not expect to see Claire Ossier still on the track. She is in 33rd back on the track. She needs to finish 20th. Uh, I believe she needs to finish uh, 25th or better to lock up the championship in this situation. Oh, no! Well, there goes uh, Clara Kindall from the lead as Louis Ballard is going berserk, wrecking his teammates. Uh, in case some of you didn't notice, uh, well, 
him and his team were ha having arguments, and I don't know if he's going to be retained, but he just took out both of their drivers' chances of winning the championship, I believe, as, uh, well, he just blatantly wrecked Clara Kendall there and took himself out of the race. Uh, good riddance, as now the Manicor cars are falling apart all around him, as, uh, well, he took out both of his teammates. Now, Jacob Eichholz is once again up to second place. Uh, actually, no, he's up to the lead now. Now that uh, Clara Kendall is, well, I think she might, I th she's running second. Excuse me, she is running second right now. She did not pit. She didn't suffer too much damage. She only had a spin out, but that is a very crucial mistake by Louis Ballard. As now we've got a little collision there between uh, Lenore Scurry and, I believe that's Calvin Hobbs. Lenore Scurry hasn't quite had the good day that she was hoping for as she backed her car into the wall earlier on. Here is Dan Lechleiter as his day uh, goes from bad to worse and, uh, well, from worse to terrible as his car breaks down on lap number 42, and I think that's going to be the end of the day for him. Uh, Dan Lechleiter soldiered on after running into the back of, uh, I believe that was Tim Borland, and, well, his day finally ends here today. Here's Les Jackson, the other half of the Bad Boy Rally team as he runs in fourth place on lap 44, doing a good job here today. He's got his teammate Scott Thomas right behind him. They like to switch positions, you know, follow each other, and uh, really kind of critique each other over the radio. They're quite a team. Uh, they're a great teammate. They're good teammates together, and they support each other on the track, and that's what I like to see, unlike Louis Ballard. And, uh, well, you, you saw what happened there. Louis Ballard, the Manticore killer. Uh, but Scott Thomas and Les Jackson working together quite well. As now we go on board, uh, Nicholas Cordovo says he... Oh, he just gave uh, Clara Kendall a bump there. As he's trying to work his way up from third place now. As he's chasing down Clara Kendall. And this is the battle for the championship right now. Between Clara Kendall and Nicholas Cordovo's in the 14 and 39. So, uh championship battle here for second place as uh, Clara Kendall starts to distance herself a little bit but as I mentioned before this is the championship battle this is the best battle on track uh, we're, n we, uh, we're not even at the 40 percent mark yet but this is the most exciting battle on track is now they've got Josh Marshall between the two of them Josh Marshall in the 18.9 car once again good to see him back and oh Looks like Josh Marshall got turned around by Nicholas Cordovas as Cordovas does not miss a beat. He is seeing red right now. He sees his championship right in front of him, and he's going to hunt down Clara Kindall and do all he can to try and get that back as he mi did not miss a beat. Spinning out Josh Marshall there as, uh, well, you see the gap opened up a little bit, but now he's really going to start closing in there. Oh, he just cut that gap right in half as uh, I think Kindall took that turn a little odd. Excuse me. Uh, concessions gave me a uh, really carbonated soda. As though, wow, Kendall is all over the track, but looks like uh, Nicholas Cordova's hangs on there. You've got Barton Sandy off. He gets himself out of the way of that battle. Good idea, because those two are racing at 110% right now. Candace Bowman serves as a good block here, and uh, oh, she's blocking both lanes, uh, both Kendall and and Cordova's there as they're still side by side head through these turns as now finally it looks like Cordova's will take the position and will take the championship lead at this point but oh he swings up in front and blocks Kindle there as here is Ian Elias who's still just kind of uh well he's been putzing around in seventh place but he needs to finish sixth right now to take the championship away from both Kindall and Cordovos, but uh, sixth place is about 30 seconds ahead of him, so uh, he's going to need to really step it up if he's going to make a mount for the championship. He's really kind of been anonymous this entire week, and uh, well, it's about time that you need to step it up and make yourself a hero, Ian Elias, if you're going to win this championship. Uh, hero or zero, pretty much at this point, it's go time, man. You got to get up there and battle for the championship as here is Jacob Eicholtz in the lead. He's been caught by his teammate and oh, he slips a bit wide, hits the ice patch and he's gonna go off. 
and he is going to surrender the lead to his teammate Nicholas Korodovos. Uh, I, I don't know if he intended to do that, but that's some good teamwork regardless, letting your uh, teammate uh, take the lead and potentially the championship as... Uh, what are you doing, uh, Lewis Jones? You're driving all over the track. You're pinching Scott Thomas into the wall. Uh, what are you doing? As Laris Ryu got into the back of Nico Bolas there. That was, a, that was a bit odd. As here is Ian Elias running in sixth place, starting to catch. I think that's Cameron Taylor up there in front of him. That is for position, but oh no. Ian Elias is reporting a vibration on that car. Something is not right. He pulls that car off to the side. He said that his oil pressure uh, dropped to zero. So he's going to pull that car off to the side of the track and... Uh, well, I believe that's another championship contender down on the wayside. Ian Elias' championship run, I believe, just ended right there. As uh, he's going to get that car towed back to the pits, and they're going to figure out what's wrong with that car. As now, looking at Calvin Hobbs is up into the top five. Calvin Hobbs, uh, one of the more anonymous drivers in pole qualifying. But by the time that the uh, first-tier qualifier came around, he dominated that race over the Rus Auto Sport cars and made his way in in a very good showing in that 330 car. And now he's worked his way up into the top five. Taking notes, Ian Elias, this is what you're supposed to do. Uh, you are supposed to uh, really come out strong in these races, even if, uh, well, you might not have the best car in the case of Calvin Hobbs. Here we're going on board Clara Kendall as... Uh, She's trying to battle up there with uh, Corridovos. Is uh, Ike Durbin's running some interference there in the 50 car. Ike Durbin having a very strong run today, as uh, Corridovos just keeps on edging ahead, and uh, well, she really just can't get a grip on him. As uh, oh, it might have been uh, some playing on Ike Durbin's part, but uh, Corridovos once again clears her as, uh, well, she's been struggling at trying to pass him. She pulls out wide here once again on lap number 50. Uh, Lenora Scurry is running some interference there on Corridovas, which let her get the run. And now Clara Kendall takes the lead, and I think she might take the championship lead if she can uh, lead from here on out. So that'll be interesting to see, as the championship lead has now devolved, well, not devolved, evolved into the battle for the lead, as now she starts to open up a gap a little bit. As, oh, dive bomb move by Nicholas Corridovos. He can't make it stick, though. Corridovos falls back to second place, and I think that uh, now Kendall has some lapped cars between her. Uh, no, I stand corrected. Corridovos is coming back, but uh, Kale Bernfart Jr. in front, if uh, she can get around him, although that might be difficult considering uh, Bernfart Jr.'s lack of uh, spatial awareness. Oh, she slips in the... Uh, Ice patch a little bit, gets on the rumble strips, but I think she'll be able to hold him off. She holds him off at the line, as now they're side by side, headed down the front straightaway here, and uh, into the vortex. It looks like Cordova's ran that turn a bit wide, and now, uh, well, getting around Burnfart Jr., this might be a chore, uh, depending on where you catch him. Oh, uh, looks like she caught him in a good spot, and Burnfart Jr. wisely lets her go, as uh, now Burnfart Jr. is going to be a pain in the ass for Corridovos to get around now as uh, Bernfart Jr. has a uh, well his lack of spatial awareness is legendary in the garage as uh, he, he caused quite a few incidents at well pretty much every track that's not a super speedway here's BB Benz in the 28 car she's had a rough day and uh, well that car oh well, she's done She's reporting that the suspension went on that car, I think. Oh, no! Clara Kendall just blew up from the lead, and that is... Uh, well, that's the end of her championship hopes. As now you see Cordova sneaked by there, and uh, well, she's trying to do all she can to get that car back to the pits. Maybe they might be able to get it repaired. But Cordova takes the lead, and... Uh, Honestly, I don't. The only driver that's left on track that I think could challenge. Oh, Burnfart Jr. cut off Eichholz. As uh, now Eichholz was trying to go for second place around. Uh, let's see. Oh, Burnfart Jr. What were you doing? Like, 
do you have a do you even have a spotter, dude? I don't even know sometimes. How did he get his how did he get his pro license? Oh! And Jan Schmidt runs into the back of uh Jan Schmidt is done. Uh, the second Altoris car is done from the race as he uh, tried to figure out what lane to take. Wasn't quite sure where Kindall was going as she had been swerving around the track and she is uh, her stricken car. But here is Ike Durbin. Uh, people going from bad runs to good runs. Ike Durbin is a surprising dark horse now for the championship as uh, well, he's running in 8th place. Uh, he's had a perfect race thus far. He is the last car on the lead lap. He started in 39th place and has gained 31 positions so far. He needs to finish 31 spots ahead of uh, Claire Ausia if he's going to win the championship. And, uh, well, in a race where all the championship contenders seem to be falling by the wayside, well, the three left standing right now are Corridovos, Ausia, and Durbin. So uh, Durbin might be a long shot, but I think he might have a shot here if uh, cars keep dropping out like they are. Now, Calvin Hobbs. Once again, Calvin Hobbs is uh, really stepping it up here today. He is running up in the top five, and he's just having an awesome run. He's in second place right now, lap number 55. And uh, if it wasn't, the only reason he's not up there battling Nikos Cordovas is his lack of raw pace, something that Cordovas definitely has. Here is... Uh, Lewis Jones and the Lewis Jones saga as he gets dumped by Bart and Sandy and uh, well can't really blame Sandy for doing that because court because uh, uh, Jones has been a weapon all day just kind of swerving around track here is Xander Knight in the zero car uh, team car to Dion Clements and he gets hooked by one of the bad boy racing cars and he gets uh, well he goes spinning into the grass there will he be able to get back on track in that flex zero, flex seal zero car, trying, trying, trying. Is he gonna do it? Uh, I think he was able to get back on track. As now Ian Elias back on track. He was running in, I think, 29th place. He's reporting another problem in that car. So, uh, well, Ian Elias. Uh, well, he he might have had a snowball's chance before, but now he definitely doesn't. Uh, that car is uh, that car's toast. He's, he's not going to win this championship. I believe he... They did get the car repaired once again, but he came out of the pits and he was six laps down, so I doubt that he is going to do anything with that. As now, Claire Aussier dives into the pits, and, uh... Well, she's going to dive back to 24th place now. After, uh... Well, she's in 24th right now, so she's definitely making some gains. Uh, if Corridovo's I'm going to do some quick math here. If Corridovos wins the race by leading the most laps, I think that Claire Aussier will need to finish 20th or better to lock up the title. So she's she was running 24th before she dove into the pits. As now here is uh, here's Les Jackson, who's up to second place now in the middle of this pit cycle. And Les Jackson is doing quite a good job. Him and uh, well, Scotty Thomas... I think has a bit of damage on that car. Uh, so Scotty Thomas is quite a bit back. But Les Jackson doing a good job. He's up in second place now. And here is Steve Tamland. And he's the last car in the lead lap. He's running in 11th place here on lap number 62, the halfway point of the race. And he is doing an impeccable job in this number 448 car. He managed to get in in the uh, tier 3 qualifier. And he's doing a heck of a job in this 48 car. Sponsored by the toilet store. And now here is the number 512 car of John Conquest. He was leading most of his uh, Tier 4 qualifier before he uh, ran into a back marker who decided to merge in front of him. And I believe he fell back to 5th or 6th, but he still made into the main race. And uh, John Conquest, yes, the best SCRA driver we have here. And uh, he's he is a very competent driver. He hasn't made many mistakes here today. And, uh, well, he is doing a good job. So uh, hopefully we'll see more of him in the PCC Cup Series coming up soon. Here is uh, Nicholas Corridovos, as he's currently still in the lead on lap number 63. But if you look back there, that's Les Jackson, who's really gaining on him quite a bit. As, oh, he slipped in the ice patch, and uh, that's going to mean Les Jackson catches up. 
even more in that number 63 Bad Boy Rally Team car as uh, they've got the angry face on the hood there and that 63 car as he's definitely closing the gap. He's really struggling to get around Josh Marshall in the 18.9 car as we go on board with Les Jackson. You can see here, oh, he's really cut that gap down. Uh, the gap that lap was less than a second as now, oh, he's trying to get around Josh Marshall. I think Josh Marshall right, might start running some interference now on, uh, yep, he ran some interference there on Les Jackson, and I think that that's the closest Les Jackson is going to get to the lead unless he can really pull something off here. Uh, but it looks like Corradovos is uh, going to drive off into the sunset on him as, uh, well, looks like he's been struggling quite a bit. Here is Cameron Taylor, who is up to sixth place by lap 65. Cameron Taylor won this race last year. Uh, he bought out the Zenus Enterprises car. Uh, the 53 car, which actually qualified once again. Uh, Andrew Tamberzan qualified that car for the second year in a row here today. And uh, that car, I believe, is running up in the top 25 right now. But Cameron Taylor is having a very strong run. He's currently uh, well, he's running in sixth place, as I said before. But uh, he's got Gaspar D'Souza and Tom Delgado right behind him. They're battling him for seventh. Well, they're running seventh and eighth right now as Candace Bowman. Uh, kind of runs some interference, and Gaspar D'Souza takes the position as though Claire Aussie is breaking down once again. Something is not right with that car as she's trying to wiggle it back to the pits, but uh, speed is quite variable on that car. She pulls it off to the side trying to get it out of the racing line, but I don't know if she's going to be able to get back to the pits as uh, her championship hopes take another blow. She was running, I believe she was running 22nd or 23rd at that point, as uh, Corradovos blo uh, blows on by once again as uh, he's really padded his lead. I think his lead right now is up to 12 seconds over Les Jackson as Jackson's really struggled trying to deal with lapped cars, uh, something that you don't really have to deal with too much in the WSCC. And here's Laris Ryu, who uh, we haven't really talked about much today. She's running in 12th place. Uh, the Indonesian Jet, as her fans call her, as, uh, well, kind of makes sense as she's sponsored by Sukhoi and a bunch of other uh, local Indonesian uh, airlines. So here's Arliss Bennington, another guy who we haven't talked about much. He's running in top, he's running in the top 10. He's in 10th place on lap number 68. Uh, this car is, uh, well, it's not the prettiest to ever hit the track uh, by any means. Uh, it's pretty gaudy if you ask me, but he's doing a good job. He's up in 10th place, part-time racer, and uh, well, he's out here just... Uh, Hanging with the big boys, really. Doing what he can, trying to get a good run in. And uh, so far, he's been able to do so. He's run a fair, uh, pretty flawless race, uh, although he is the last car on the lead lap right now. As Claire Aussier, her problems were able to get fixed. And uh, she's going to come back on track. And, uh, oh, she just got put six laps down. So uh, let's see if she'll be able to... Uh, rebound is well her main points rival goes by right there as well, I think she's currently running in 28th place right now so she's really gonna have to uh, dig deep and hope for some major attrition she's got any hope of winning this championship as Corradovos seems unstoppable at this point nothing is reporting to be wrong with that car as here is uh, Josh Marshall he's currently running in 12th place and uh, oh, he gets into Scott Thomas there, and he spins himself out uh, between, I think that's 6 and 7. Uh, but Josh Marshall's had a pretty strong day. He is currently, well, top 15 in that car, which is missing its rear end. He's been uh, a lap down most of the day, but he's slowly been picking up spots due to attrition. Calvin Hobbs, once again, is uh, still in second place. He's only 10 seconds back, though, from the leader. As you can see back there, there's... Uh, the other two bad boy rally team cars of Les Jackson and Scott Thomas who are running nose to tail as usual third and fourth as uh, it looks like Calvin Hobbs is doing some battle with uh, Jared Payne who got his oil uh, leak fixed earlier on in the race uh, kind of ironic that he's sponsored by Pertec but that's aside the point uh, Calvin Hobbs having an excellent run here today a flawless race uh, by the Alberta native and uh, uh, hoping we will see more of him here in the PCC Cup Series soon because uh, it's not every day you get a talent like him that comes around uh, seemingly out of nowhere and just dominates 
as though Les Jackson gets uh, himself spun out there from fourth place, but uh, no harm, no foul, not too much damage, and he'll continue on, uh, albeit a few seconds behind. Here's Kale Burnfart Jr., and whenever we're focused on him, it can't be for anything good, as uh, his car breaks down, and, well, lap number 73 pulls it off to the side. That's surprisingly smart. He's almost in the racing line, though, but... Uh, I think that might be the end of his races. Oh, there goes Brian Gallagher, and another championship contender falls by the wayside. Although, honestly, he didn't have much of a chance, seeing as he had already broken down once before. And, uh, well, it looked like that engine failure took him, uh, that catastrophic engine failure took him by surprise as he pulled that car off to the side. Tough break for him. He was doing quite a good job here today. Um, although, well, this race hasn't really been going his way. He did well to uh, buy his way into the field, though, as here is Tom Delgado and Ike Durbin. Ike Durbin, one of uh, the only championship contenders who is still standing here. Uh, Tom Delgado is running in sixth, Ike Durbin seventh, as I mentioned before. Tom Delgado also having a strong run. He'll be running full-time next season. Uh, his operation has downsized from three cars to one. Maybe they bit off a bit more than they could chew this season. Uh, but here, lap number 82. Two. Um, the 39 car is leading by 25 seconds over um, the 63 and the 62 car, who have once again hooked up and are nose to tail. I believe uh, they have this entire race planned like that, as uh, well, they're just really trying to gather experience passing each other, I suppose, as you can see Scott Thomas there with his uh, torn up rear end as he goes around Les Jackson lets him by as uh, well they're really racing as one car in this series as they just pit at the same time so um, not really differentiating from strategy uh, as well they seem to be content just running nose to tail this entire race uh, can't say I blame them I, I, I can't imagine what would happen to them if one of them got separated seeing as they've been like this uh well, throughout everything, as Barton Sandy goes around, Barton Sandy with a problem, he tags Cameron Taylor, and his race is done here today. As, uh, well, he, was, he wasn't running too well, but he was running in the top 20. As now, uh, looks like Nicholas Corradovos brings his car into the pit lane. And he's, uh, gonna get all that sorted out here, and, uh, get everything tinkered with. As here's Ike Durbin, he's currently running in 10th place after that pit stop. And, oh no, well there goes the engine on that car, and uh, what a heartbreak for him. He was having such a strong run, he was running in the top 10 uh, for quite a bit of the race, and well, his plans for the championship just went up in smoke, and now there were two. Claire Aussier and Nicholas Cordovos are the only two championship contenders left that have a shot at the title, but here is... Uh, Scotty Thomas, lap number 86, is uh, he's reporting a problem now. As that car, uh, the rear end gear, I think is starting to go on that car. He's trying to shake it, getting it going again. Uh, but he just stops it in nearly the same spot that uh, Kale Bernfart Jr. stopped his car. And he is done for the day, unfortunately. Now we're just down to Les Jackson. And, uh, well, I can't imagine he's too happy with nobody to run uh, nose to tail with anymore. Uh, but here is Calvin Hobbs, who's... 30 seconds behind uh, Nicholas Corradovos here on lap number 86 as uh, he's really trying to work his way up towards the front. Uh, he is one of the only cars left who can actually keep pace with him, but he's slowly been losing ground as the laps go by. As here is Gaspar D'Souza. I said that, uh, well, Aussie and Corradovos were the only two that were remaining standing. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza's car is still very strong, but he can't win the championship regardless. Even if he does win, because Aussie won't be able to finish last, it's seeming it's simply impossible numerically for Gaspar D'Souza to win the championship. But he's still going to give this team the strongest run that he can. As uh, well, he did buy this ride for them, and he's really just trying to get the best run for Russo Autosport that they can. Uh, Russo Autosport's cutting back to a part-time schedule once again next year. Uh, running simply the European races, and uh, I think Yakovsky, if he comes back after that incident uh, at Decatur, uh, if he'll be able to return for that race, as Josh Marshall breaks down from 10th place.
heartbreak for him. He was running so well here today. Uh, but I think he'll be able to get back out on track as now looking at Claire Ossier. As uh, if Cordova's wins this race, I mentioned before, if Cordova's wins, uh, she is going to have to finish 20th or better. Well, she's currently running 26th place. And, uh, well, here's Dion Scott as uh, she... Pa oh, she gets into him and... Well, that car looks like it's uh, hurt after that. So that might be another position for Claire Ausier. A bit, <laughs> a bit of uh, dirty driving by Ausier trying to gain some positions and win this championship. Uh, take him as you can. But uh, here's John Conquest who's well, missing his hood now. I'm not sure where that went. But uh, him and Nico Bolas are locked in a battle for the best SCRA driver in the field. As Bolas just passed him for 13th there. And uh, here's the third SERA driver who's really been uh, still hanging around, and that's Tim Borland. He's running in 15th, so the SERA drivers are 13th through 15th on track right now. And uh, Tim Borland has been pretty strong here all day. He's uh, really just kind of stayed anonymous along with the other two SERA drivers, uh, Bolas and Conquest, but they've uh, just slowly been picking their way through the field as uh, they fall out due to attrition. As now, ooh! Looked like uh, Corridovo's nearly tagged Eichholz there, but Eichholz is going a lap down, believe it or not, as now uh, Corridovo's has set a blistering pace all race. He brought his A game here today. The whole team brought their A game. As now they've got both of their cars in the top five, and Corridovo's has just run an absolutely flawless, flawless, uh, flawless race. He has done nothing uh, that would stop him here today, as now Ausier. Ausier is up to 23rd place with 30 laps to go. Uh, she needs three more positions to lock up the title. Uh, so she's really hoping for some attrition here because, well, seeing as she's six laps down, she's really going to need a lot of attrition if she's going to have any shot of winning this championship here today. As now, uh, well, there's nobody really within a lap of her aside from... Well, I mean, a couple of the uh, OMG protested racing cars are, I think, Burnfart Jr.'s within a lap of her, and she's in front of Elias uh, by about half a lap, so not too many cars in uh, passing range for her, but she dives into the pits the next lap anyways, uh, so uh, Claire, Claire Ausier into the pits as her championship hopes are slowly evaporating as now here is Corridovos diving into the pits on uh, lap number 99 there's 26 laps to go as Ian Elias hits the pits right in front of him Ian Elias about to go seven laps down uh, as his championships ho as his championship hopes are well pretty much done oh Jared Payne the oil leak uh, once again returns and uh, well, he's gonna pull his car off to the side and uh, stay out of the way of the leaders and uh, everyone else who's coming around but uh, he was having a pretty strong run he was running up in the top 15 before that happened as uh, oh, remember how before well how Ausie ran in the back of Clements well now she's passing him for position so this is a pass for 23rd place and uh, well after that pit stop she's working her way back up to 23rd so uh, she's got she really needs to step it up if she's going to win this championship. Uh, she's three spots away. Either she needs to step it up or people need to start dropping out. Uh, right quick and in a hurry if she has any shot of this championship. It's not over yet. As uh, here is the best SCRA running car. The SCRA uh, is actually giving a small trophy to the driver who represents their series the best in this race. is Tim Borland now. Running in 12th place, he dives into the pits. Uh, Tim Borland uh, would be uh, the recipient of that trophy at this point. Here is Andrew Tamarzan in the 53 car. He has been quite possibly the most anonymous driver in this race. He has uh, really not done anything aside from you know, just kind of be slow and out of the way of everybody else. But he's running in 17th. So uh, quite possibly the last race for Zenus in the series as uh, well their funding is really going down the drain they really hadn't done much all season and uh, I think this might be their last race here's Laris Ryu is up to 8th place in the 954 car 
running, I think that she's running behind Tim Borland, but she's up into 8th place now as uh, she hits the ice patch, slides a bit wide, and I think she just got passed by Jacob Eicholtz. No, uh, that was Cameron Taylor who passed her for position. Now she works her way back on track. The European, not European, the Indonesian jet, I'm sorry. The Indonesian jet in the 954 cars, or fans like to call her. She is a very strong driver. Uh, kind of surprised to see her out here in Cleveland in the snow. Uh, but here is Dion Clements and all that damage that Claire Aussier did to her, uh, did to him. That puts him out of the race right here on lap number 106. And, uh, well, he just went up in smoke and that's the end of his day. Here is Jacob Eicholtz and Arliss Bennington back there. And this is the battle, well, battle for fifth place. Can't really say it's too much of a battle, but, but they are within a second of each other. Arliss Bennington having a very strong run today. Jacob Eicholtz as well in his last run for Katziv. I um, think he's going to the Ramsey Cockner team that's opening up uh, next year, so that'll be interesting to see. Here is uh, Claire Ossier, and she's... Hmm. I think she's diving into the pits again. Something's definitely not right with that car. I'm not sure why she's back in the pits once again. It's a bit strange to see. Um, something definitely wrong with that 11 car. Uh, here's Steve Tamland in the 448 car. Is well, he jammed up Josh Marshall a little bit there, but this is the battle: 448, 954, and 77. This is the battle for ninth place. As uh, well, they're really going at it hard, trying to get uh, trying to get top tens here. And Steve Tamland has that position locked down pretty strong. And uh, Cameron Taylor trying to challenge him. I think that's. Uh, that's Les Jackson back there, but Les Jackson is getting ready to put these guys a lap down. Les Jackson, as I mentioned, is up to second place. Oh, Josh Marshall got into the side of Cameron Taylor there. But Les Jackson running in second place, having a very strong run here today. Uh, he's 55 seconds back from the leader, so almost a full lap. Uh, but Ke uh, Calvin Hobbs is in third place, still a bit uh, further back. I think Calvin Hobbs might be a lap down as now. Uh, Claire Aussier makes her third pit stop. Uh, she's reporting that there is a loose wheel on the car, uh, as if anything could go much wrong, uh, much more wrong with this team. Uh, this, these repeated pit stops are just—they're they're shooting themselves in the foot even more. Uh, I tempted to say it's championship over. Is oh, looks like Les Jackson just got run over. By Gaspar de Souza from second place, and uh, I think he's going to get bogged down in the snow from second place. So that's going to hand second place back over to Calvin Hobbs now. But uh, well, Calvin Hobbs is currently a lap down, which means that Nicholas Corradovos has lapped the field here today. This is the first time that the field's been lapped since uh, 2006. So that's going to be an interesting stat here as we're under five laps to go. Nicholas Corradovos appears to be unopposed as he has brought his A game here today. Nicholas Corradovos rounding turn number eight, coming down the final straightaway as he's getting ready to secure his name in the annals of history <coughs> as he is coming around turn nine into turn ten. There's Les Jackson in front of him. And Nicholas Cordovos is going to win the Cleveland Grand Prix here today, the 2012 Cleveland Grand Prix. Claire Aussier would make it to the finish after those repeated pit stops, but would it be enough to secure the championship? Let's find out who your 2012 PCC Cup Series champion is here today.
Nicholas Cordovos takes the point lead by seven points over Claire Aussier. Aussier's finish was not good enough to get her the title. Ian Elias is in third place. Gaspar D'Souza jumps up to fourth place. Claire Kendall fifth. Ike Durbin has a strong run up to sixth place. Cameron Taylor seventh. Barry Juvenau falls down to eighth. Uh, Brian Gallagher in 9th. Greg Max did not qualify for this race. He is 10th. Jacob Eichholz 11th. Uh, huge jump for Eichholz there in the 49 car. Uh, Barton Sandy up to 12th. Chris Winter in 13th. Ramsey Cockiner in 14th. Benson 15th. Sam Brown 16th. Pete Maverick did not qualify. He is 17th. Lenny Jacobs got a huge jump in the points. He is up to 18th. Same thing with Lewis Jones up to 19th place. And Dan Foray rounds out your top 20 in points at the end of the season. Now for the results of this event. Uh, Corridovos finished first. Calvin Hobbs second. Arliss Bennington a very strong run there. In that 005 car up to third place, Jacob Eichholz holds on to finish fourth. Gaspar D'Souza in the top five in that Rus Autosport entry, a great run for him. Tom Delgado finishes sixth. Laris Ryu, a very quiet run. The Indonesian Jet there in seventh place. Lenore Scurry uh, recovers to finish eighth after having her rear end removed. Les Jackson uh, falls down to ninth after a very strong run after getting punted by... Uh, I believe it was Lenore Scurry, actually, if I'm not mistaken. Lenore Scurry or Gaspar de Souza, I don't remember. Uh, Steve Tamland rounds out your top 10 with a surprisingly strong run. Lenny Jacobs survives to finish 11th. John Conquest uh, is the best SCRA driver in this race in 12th place. Nico Bolas in 13th. They had a very strong run that came down to the finish. Uh, Cameron Taylor in 14th. Tim Borland, the third SCRA driver in the top 15. Uh, it is in 15th. Josh Marshall, 16th. Andrew Tamarzan has a very quiet run in Zenus Enterprises, uh, possibly their final race. Candace Bowman uh, gets a good start looking forward to uh, next season in that 20 car. She will be running for Rookie of the Year in that 20 car next year. Lewis Jones uh, in 19th. And Jared Plane Crash Payne finishes in 20th place after a persistent oil leak hampered his efforts early on.